This is a Dynamics 365 podcast focusing on the ingredients of a successful Dynamics 365 practice. Your host is Business Solution MVP Mark Smith, otherwise known as NZ365Guy. Over the coming weeks, I'll be interviewing seasoned professionals from various parts of the world talking about what it takes to be successful in a Dynamics 365 practice. For more information on this interview, show notes, feedback, and resources mentioned, or to suggest a guest for future episodes, please go to nz365guy.com forward slash podcast. Thanks to Maplytics for sponsoring the Dynamics 365 Practice Podcast. iNorgic is a leading Microsoft Gold Dynamics CRM ISV, delivering best-in-class Dynamics 365 solutions through unparalleled offerings of service and add-ons. Its flagship products, Maplytics, is a market-leading certified for Microsoft Dynamics 365 geo-analytical mapping app that empowers users with powerful map visualization and routing capabilities to drive better sales, improve business processes, and engage right customer at the right time. Hi, everyone. I'm here with Ben Volmer, and in this episode, we're going to be focusing on how practices can create great working relationships with Microsoft. Ben is the worldwide field service leader at Microsoft and has worked with Dynamics since CRM 1.0. Ben, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Mark. appreciate it. Excellent. So can you give us a bit of background on you? Uh, you know, uh, what can you tell us about yourself and your Dynamics career so far? Uh, you know, I've been, I've been around Dynamics uh, since actually the, the, the very inception of the product. Um, I, I was at a partner before this. We went to uh, one of the Inner Circle events, and they said, "Hey, that, that Great Plain Siebel front office thing you're doing—that's going to die pretty soon. Here's what we're, here's what we're replacing it with." Um, and my whole team kind of pivoted around to focus on Dynamics. Um, at the time, it was it was Microsoft Business Solutions uh, CRM. So mm-hmm. I've been doing it since uh, since V1, um, or you know V1 Alpha. We were the first site to actually deploy it, the code outside of Redmond. So so I've been been doing the product for for quite some time. Mm. Um, and as far as career goes, I started off doing um, consulting and then moved into doing pre sales. Um, joined Microsoft mm-hmm. in uh, it was actually 14 years ago. Joined Microsoft. Uh, started off as a partner technology strategist. So my job was help partners. Uh, activate it was kind of kind of neat some of my early partners um include, include partners that have have uh have since grown to be very large in the dynamics world um so folks mm-hmm. like customer effective mm-hmm. and, and invoke systems for example um were called partners that helped mm-hmm. help, we helped get started um Brilliant. and then i've been been uh exactly uh, six years ago yesterday i moved over into a sales role so i moved from there to an architect mm-hmm. role and then i moved into a sales role six years ago and sold to uh, enterprise accounts, and then uh, I moved over to our mid-market accounts team, and then I moved to worldwide corporate mm-hmm. sales uh, two years ago. And so that's where you are now. And and, and that's where I, that's where I am now. So 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 my job now is to help. Um, it's mainly internally focused and customer focused, but it's it's to help our mm-hmm. our internal teams understand how to f- sell and position field service. And then help customers understand where our roadmap is, wh- where we're going, um, what we're doing, um, and, and kind of help those big strategic deals we're working on um, understand the value of a field service, uh, both from a, from a roadmap perspective as well as from a, uh, a here and now perspective. Right. Brilliant. Brilliant. So, so what is that heavy doing on a day-to-day type basis? Uh, day-to-day is... Uh, Oh, that, that, that's that's a um, that's a great question. Uh, every day, the, the coolest part for me, though, the job is, is is every day for me is different. Everything I do in this job nice. every day is different. So, so there is no mm-hmm. there is no standard day. Um, it's everything from mm-hmm. working on long term projects that are you know six or twelve months out. Um, uh, customer escalation. So, if a customer. Um, uh, Either through the buying process, um, we ran across a, 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 a you know a kink in the way we do something, either from a product perspective or mm-hmm. from a most likely usually it's from a contractual perspective. You know we mm-hmm. you know, our, our dotted eye is a little bit a little bit to the right of the eye, so we had to you know kind of correct that a little bit. Um, uh, to you know helping customers with. Um, 
with vision demos to helping, you know, I've done quite a bit of work with the IoT, the Catching Field Service. So it's working with those teams yep. to make sure that they can help sell field service as part of their overall solution. Um, the coolest thing we're working with right now is, is, the, is the HoloLens. Been working with the, the mixed reality teams, getting um, field service in their demos, and then getting um, their product in our demos. Excellent, 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 exciting, exciting. Very cool. So in this episode, I'm really interested in talking or exploring how Dynamics Partners can develop an outstanding relationship with Microsoft. And I know this is not your core functional area, but with 14 years experience and probably uh, touched and engaged with many partners, I want to draw on that um, a little. So who should a partner be connecting with in Microsoft nowadays? Who, what are the current roles, positions, titles, that type of thing in, in the Dynamics community that they should be engaging with? You know, the roles are, I think it depends on what kind of partner you are. Um, mm-hmm. if you're going after, you know, enterprise accounts, um, you should definitely engage in an SSP. Um, mm-hmm. if you're a partner just kind of getting started and you're, you're, or you're, or you're restarting your practice or you're, you know, there's partner mm-hmm. development managers you, sh- you should talk to, um, I would tell you there's no shortage of people at Microsoft you can talk to. Um, what I, what yeah. I would say for the partners is figure out what you want to be when you grow up. Um, you know, who, who are you? Mm-hmm. you know, do you have a vertical focus? If you do, you might want to talk to somebody in the vertical team. If you don't have a vertical yeah. focus and you have more of a horizontal or geographic focus, you, you may want to talk to um, you know, s- s- somebody in the local team. I mean, I think a lot of partners um, – uh, it's, 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 you know, they, they try to punch above their weight sometimes. Um, yep, yep. It, it, you don't want to be, you don't, you know, you, you want to be the right level. So, so don't try to be, don't, don't try to be nationally managed. If you're a local partner, don't try to be globally managed. Mm-hmm. If you're a mm-hmm. national partner for, 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 for me, the, 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 the partner channel manager um, and the, uh, the SSPs in your area, especially if you're working on, on enterprise deals, um, make the most of the sense for you to connect with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, what have you when you've seen partners working well with Microsoft? What are the, the typical patterns that you see? Um, where you and I'm not looking for um, if you like from Microsoft's engagement back with a partner, but really partners that excel in creating great relationships with Microsoft. What, what are the patterns you've seen? Um, I, I think the biggest pattern I've seen is 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 openness and the willing willingness to share. Um, realizing mm-hmm. that um, you're not going to get every deal. You're not going to be in every deal. You're not, you're not going to be there every time. Um, mm-hmm. And the other thing is, I, I would say clearly communicated um, ex- expectations. It's yeah, kind of mm-hmm. like if you, have, if you have kids or, or, or your spouse, yeah. um, you, you know, do not leave your purse in the car, honey. It will get broken into. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my, my wife and I had that argument for 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 about three years, and uh, then some, one day somebody <laughs> broke into our car, and her purse got got, got yanked, and then it became all, mm-hmm. all of a sudden it became a little more important on why that expectation was there. Um, yeah. And so I, I think with Microsoft is the same way. You need to set that expectation of, um, you know, I'm willing to give you this, um, and, but here's 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 my expectation of how you're going to treat that. Um, and realize mm-hmm. that the people you're working with don't always have don't always have control. Um, yeah. And sometimes I think you know I think we're used to you know from a partner side I'm used to having you know more more control if you will. Mm-hmm. Realize that in every situation at Microsoft uh, there's a lot of times where I don't have uh, you know in my current job particularly I don't have any control or even as an SSP. Yeah. I may know the right thing to do. I may know how to do the right thing, but because of mm-hmm. other politics and other things going on in, in, in the company or with the account team or, or, or other things, um, I may not be able to do what I want to do and might be the right thing. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe the, 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 the straightest route. So sometimes I got I got to kind of take the circuitous route to, to get to where I want to go. And so I think so, some right. partners get frustrated with the circuitous route, well, well, you know, A to B. Well, mm-hmm. I know A to B is the fastest way, but I need to kind of, I need to kind of make a right hand turn and circle around, and then I can go to A yeah. to B to C to D, and then I get to my destination. But but it takes me a little while to get there. Mm-hmm. 
So then, so, so what what type of frequency should a, a partner be engaging? Now, I can understand if there's a deal in play, Microsoft, you know, the the appropriate team member would want to know about the deal and how they could support that. But outside of that, uh, general relationship building, that type of thing, you know, to create those connections and and provide high visibility about what's going on in the partner business to Microsoft. What type of frequencies should be put in place? Um, what type of rhythms, that type of thing? Um, I, you know, I, I would say overdoing it um, is 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 worse than underdoing it. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like a steak. Don't overdo the steak, underdo the steak. Um, right. You, you don't want to – I've seen partners want to do weekly syncs, and, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, wow. I, weekly syncs aren't going to happen. Um, at least for me, yeah. they're not. Um, mm-hmm. a, a lot of partners, um, you know, kind of a monthly sync is there. Um, yep, yep. Or, or some partners, I, I would almost say that I, I get them, I, you know, they, they come on demand. So it becomes one of those things where, um, you know, we may not talk for three months and all of a sudden we, 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 we need to talk. Um, mm-hmm. and, and so I would, I would say, you know, monthly is the, is the, again, if, if and I'm picking on the, if you're a 20 or 30 person consulting firm and you're kind of a midsize yeah. consulting firm, um, you know, monthly would be the the maximum you should you should want to get to run somebody from Microsoft at a at a at a sales level. Um, mm-hmm, e- mm-hmm. Even every month and a, every month and a half or two months would 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 be a yeah appropriate time frame to have. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. So, so how do you see the Dynamics three six five partner evolving, or, or what's what do you see the future? You know, traditionally, uh, a lot of partners have pretty much gone after every deal that they smelled out in the market, and um, you know, were very wide but not very deep, if you like, on verticalization um, or industry specific verticalization. I've heard a lot from Microsoft saying it's time to, and they've been saying it actually Microsoft for some years now need to vertical. Do you see that's even more important in the future in the way Microsoft's direction is? With yeah, the I, I think verticalization well is important. Verticalization is important, Mark, but I think also size of customer is important. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you know, know who your customer is. Um, you know, if, if you're a, again, 25, you know, you're a 10 person consulting firm, you're a 25 person consulting firm. You probably don't have business doing business with a Fortune 500 company. Correct. Um, well, we say correct, but that that's one of those things where partners are used to chasing anything that's got dollars, and, and they want to go do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes a lot of – if I look at the pursuits – um, there was a pursuit we, we, we did recently. Um, matter of fact, I'm on one right now. And, and the two line, you know, mm-hmm. just the people who are responsible for actions, is, is 14 mm-hmm. people. Wow. Wow. Um, and now that's a, that's a blend of Microsoft and our partners, but there's 14 people. I'm not saying yeah. 14 people are going to show up to the demo and 14 people are going to do, but there's 14 people doing the deal. Yep. Yep. If you're a, if you're a 15 person consulting firm, uh, you know, we just, we just, we just killed half your bandwidth. Um, mm-hmm. so, so, so I would definitely say fr- from a, from a partner perspective, identify what segment you belong in the vertical stuff. We've been preaching the vertical stuff for years. Some partners get it. Some partners don't. Um, and I don't think yeah. you have to have a vertical IP, by the way, I, I don't necessarily think you have to have a, have a prepackaged quick start offering for, for this vertical. There's a lot of verticals mm-hmm. you can hit in Dynamics without having prepackaged IP for them. Yeah, um, agreed. Uh, so pick those areas, pick those verticals, um, and know where your if if you're an SMC customer, what you know, formerly known as SMB and, and CTM and some of mm-hmm. it, it, it I would rather you be honest with yourself, say I am this type of partner, um, yeah. than than try to try to muddle through a, a deal you have no business or a customer you have no business because you know the, the deal is half of battle right you got you fight to get the business um and then once you fight to get the business then you gotta fight to keep the customer because you weren't a good fit for the customer to begin with it's uh 
it's probably it's easy to make sense, but it's hard for partners to necessarily create that laser focus in their businesses in a way. It, 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 I mean, it's it's hard when you're, you're an entrepreneur to say, okay, you know, I, I, I've I've given blood, sweat, and tears to make my business, and it's hard to say, okay, you know what? Uh, and a million dollars walks by, you want to grab that million dollars. Um, yeah. you know, I, I, I would tell you that, you know, back when I was doing other products before Microsoft, um, I would rather, I would rather have done three or four $30,000 deals than mm-hmm. I would have a $150,000 deal. Right. right. Because I was in and out in a week and the customer was very, very happy. And it was, it was, it was relatively quick and easy projects. Um, as opposed mm-hmm. to the, you know, this was 20 years ago, the hundred thousand dollar projects at that point were, were generally month, month and a half long projects, higher set of expectations. Yes. Um, it was, it was better money for me to do smaller projects and lots of them than it was to do mm-hmm. bigger projects and fewer of them. Yeah. Yeah. So what skills does a partner need to develop um, or hire into their business looking forward and and the way, you know, the product's becoming um, is, you know, becoming very application specific and focused on specific areas? What what changes do you see a partner needs to take? Specialization is going to be a requirement. You know, I think, you know, I think we talked, we've talked before offline, Mark. I mean, you started at CRM 1.2 and you could learn the whole platform in about, uh, about 12 and a half minutes. Um, and even, you know, even if I look at 4.0, you know, you could be the master of the entire platform. Um, mm. but when, when you look at what we've got with Dynamics 365, if somebody says, uh, you know, I, I know everything, I know, I know the whole product, Yeah. you know, m- my <laughs> spidey sense tingles. Um, yeah. so I think partners, the big thing with partners is, is, you know, let's make sure we, we value, um, and we we work with um, different skill sets. So so, so the, the skill set to do PSA or field service is very very mm-hmm. different than the skill set to do Salesforce automation. Um, yeah, one hundred. The, the customer is very very different. Um, you know, when you're mm-hmm. doing you know, you're doing SFA, you know, the, the customer is this you know is a salesperson. When you're doing uh, field service, it's it's an operations person, um, which yeah. generally has a hatred of salespeople. So if you act like if you act like you do on a yeah. SFA project, on a, P, on, a, on a field service project, your your project's not going to last very long. Um, yeah, yeah, it's interesting because in my experience, when I look at traditional ERP suppliers or, or partners, as opposed to CRM partners, the ERP partners tend to have a much better handling under or having specific staff with specialization in specific areas of the product. They weren't generalists. They didn't know the whole product, but they knew very specific areas to a deep level um, just because of the nature, you know, of more like an AX as an example. So um, it makes sense now we're seeing that start to come more into the CRM space as well. Yeah. And and I think there's, you know, when, when I look at you know, before joining Microsoft, was it a partner? Like what, what we had at the partner. I mean, on the on the ERP side, we had people who did nothing. You know, you know, you were the report writer, you were the data importer. You know, mm-hmm. you were the, and and they basically stayed busy. On, now that they had kind of a major and a minor, um, kind of like college. Yeah. You know, my my major yeah. is art history. Um, mm-hmm. My minor might be you know, uh, you know, I, I, I S. Um, yeah, and so having a major and a minor, I think, for partners is important. But but again, you you can't take yeah. a. I think the big thing is you can't take a somebody who's been doing Salesforce automation, um, mm-hmm. and drop them off onto a field service project yeah. with no ramp. To, I mean, when we hire employees, we say, okay, you're going to get mentored underneath Mark. You're spend the next two weeks on you know two projects working underneath Mark. We're going to cut your bill rate because we want you to you know know what you're doing. We're going to you know you're mm-hmm. using we're going we're going to we're going to make you kind of fit this mold. You have to do the yep. exact same thing when you're going from SFA to PSA or SFA to field service. You can't just drop. Um, you can't drop somebody who just who, who knows the product or knows the platform off 
they're, they're, they're going to have a head start. I mean, they're going to have a way have a head start. But the the mindset, the product itself is a very different product. So, so the, the partners have got to kind of, um, you know, um, manage their business around that and understand that they, they need to ramp their people differently and have more specialization. Yeah, 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 agreed. So what do partners need to stop doing? What mistakes do you see partners making that are, are limiting them, particularly how they're engaging with Microsoft? Um, it actually might not be just specifically how they're engaging with Microsoft. It might be more your perception as somebody inside Microsoft observing habits and partners that are not doing them any favors, either commercially or uh, in their relationship with Microsoft. So, so, so I'll tell you a few things, it, you know, when I, when I have a call with a partner, um, mm-hmm. you know, my talk track goes something like this. Hey, hey, look, Mark, I appreciate the time of the call today. I just want to set, set the expectation here. I don't get the leads. I don't hand out leads. Mm-hmm. I don't pass off leads. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, by the time somebody, get, somebody comes to me, the partner and the deal are pretty much baked. I'm just there mm-hmm. to help make mm-hmm. sure that you know, we cover any sort of noises. Now, sometimes we get asked for deals that are outside of us, the ones I'm involved with. I'm happy to kind of kick, kick you over as, as a, as a, as a recommended source, but no mm-hmm. guarantees mm-hmm. there because I, again, I don't control those things. Um, yeah. And, and so, so that for me is, and, and you, 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 you I heard you chuckling a little bit there because you probably heard that same mm. talk track from other people. Mm-hmm. Um, totally. But, but that talk track is basically trying to set expectations that, uh, you know, and even, even, if, even if I was, when I was an SSP, a lot of leads I got, I couldn't necessarily, I mean, I'll never forget it. I was working a deal one time and the customer was pre, had preordained a partner to work this, this opportunity. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing I could do. Not a single thing I could do to talk, talk, t- tell that customer. And I tried, we, I mean, I had the conversation with the customer. Customer, that partner is not the right partner for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think what partners need to realize is that, is that sh- sharing with Microsoft is not a bad thing. Um, mm-hmm. But setting expectations about how you're going to share, what you're going to share, um, and being open with Microsoft, I, I think th- that's the. You know that that's one. The other one that that, that they they should stop doing, um, and this was this was a pet peeve of mine. Don't email me a mm-hmm. question, and then email email one of my colleagues a question, the exact same question, mm-hmm. on a different email chain. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I've heard of this before. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, w- 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 you know, yeah. on, on the portal side, uh, C- Corey and I get, get a fair number of portals questions. And they'll send Corey an email mm-hmm. and they'll send me an email. What Corey and I have gotten in the habit of doing is just CCing each other on the replies. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I'm like, I'm like, come on. You just wasted two people's time instead of one person's time. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I, yeah um, exactly. We want to help you. So, so, so I, you know, that, that's, that's my current pet peeve. Where do you think the unrealistic expectation has come from? from partners when they ask Microsoft for leads or even to some way expect Microsoft to show their business favoritism as a partner over other partners. You know, Microsoft's developing an ecosystem uh, through its partner network that needs to be fair to everybody. And a partner would hate it if, you know, they saw Microsoft uh, favoring another partner. But I often see partners still have that expectation that Microsoft should favor them. Where do you think that unrealistic expectations come from over the years? Well, I think some partners, if if you go back and if you go back in history, right. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, the partner I worked for before Microsoft was a, was a dynamics GP partner that GP and SL Mm -hmm. was, was, was our, was our bread and butter. Um, you know, we had a partner account manager and all that partner mm-hmm. account manager did was not all they did, but, but one of their, one of the things they did a, a quite a bit of was, was passing my passing people who called into Microsoft, people called in great planes. They would pass them to, mm-hmm. to us to, to work. Right. Um, and what, what, what shifted mm-hmm. and changed, um, you know, so, so when I joined Microsoft, when, when dinosaurs were on the earth, there were six people doing CRM in the U S mm-hmm. six. Wow. Uh, you, you, you can't cover, 
Yeah. Six people can't cover anything, right? I mean, six people at that point, you're, <laughs> um, there's way more than six today. Um, so what happens now is yeah. it used to be that a lead would come in. We would kick it to a partner. Hey, Bob, here is, uh, here is Susie from ABC company. She just called in last week. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and, and, and so, but now, you, you know, those, those, those customers call up and they get signed to a Microsoft sales rep to yeah. actually, actually work. And then that sales yeah. rep figures yeah. out who or yeah. she, who he or she, the SSP figures out who or she it's wants engage. to engage. And, and now there still yeah. is a, there still is a lead mechanism, by the way, just, I mean, so the inside sales team still has a lead mechanism, mm-hmm. but on, on the larger deals, it used to be, you know, we, they would come in. It was literally a piece of paper and a name on a piece of paper, and we would go, "Okay, this goes to." And, and as a yeah. partner, I swear, <laughs> I swear that you know, GP or you know, Great Plain Software, you know, they kind of give out leads like peanut butter, right? They put on a bread and to kind of make sure it was yeah. evenly spread across. And so you could be um, a very small company and get a lead for a huge company because you were next up in the lead distribution mm-hmm. roster. Right. 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 So just a round robin system kind it, of thing. It was the round robin. So, so I don't, I think some partner, you know, Microsoft's business has evolved. And some partners mm, absolutely. Are, 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 have not, I'm going to say caught up with, but, but they're not following, um, they're not following that same, um, uh, they haven't evolved with Microsoft. Yeah, matured. Oh, yeah. Not, not, not just matured, but just. I mean, you know. Again, I go back to when when I joined Microsoft. You know, um, my team was uh, five partner account managers, um, mm-hmm. and 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 me as me as a TSP that became an SSP. So 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 when I first joined Microsoft fourteen yeah. years ago, there was there were six of us on the team. Five of us, five people did partner account management, and and I helped do the technical mm-hmm. side of the, the partners, and then I became a, a specialist just for CRM. Okay, right. So, so that there was no there was no SSPs, and and then slowly over time, those six became, you know, four four SSPs, two partner account managers, mm-hmm. and then it became five SSPs and one partner account manager, and then it became six SSPs and no partner account managers. Right. Um, right. And so, so I think as a, as a partner, you, you, you kind of need to sit back and look at yourself and go, okay, how has my business evolved and how can I help? So what, you know, successfully one of the, one of the partners I work with, what, what they would do is they would come and say, Hey, What's a chunk of your of your account list you have not penetrated yet? Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I'd say, hey, look, I have not been able to go after um, professional services yet, or I have not been able to go after. Here are fourteen accounts I have not been able to crack yet. Go see what you can. Go see what you can turn right, up. Right. And though, and when when they, when they would get something, I, I, I tell you that, that did two things. One is when they get something, I was I was ecstatic because that you know meant I I had to do less work to get something. But the second mm-hmm, thing was mm-hmm. when I got a deal that was that was ready to be chased they would almost get first dibs on it because they had proven they yeah. had um they had stuck with me through thin and thin through thin and thick if you will um yeah. and so, so that, that that's something i think partners should do more of and don't do it don't do enough if you're not investing as a partner and some sort of telesales telesales activity um yeah. you or outbound marketing you probably um should mm-hmm. reevaluate how you're how how you're doing your sales and marketing uh, efforts today brilliant i think I think it's going to be a good tip for some of the listeners. Um, brilliant. So uh, my next question is, if you look at the Dynamics landscape and the various solutions now available, such as field service, sales, customer service, talent, finance and operations, retail, project service automation, marketing and customer insight, and that's just the list today, um, what do you see the large growth or where is the white space for partners that if you like, they've got a good established business, but they want to um, grow. What what's the recommendation across that product suite um, that they should take? Uh, uh, field service. Oh, uh, 
Uh, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I was, that was that was field service in my area. <laughs> I, 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 I know it's your area. But, I got, I got but, ulterior but, motives but, but, here. Uh, so, uh, uh, this gives you an opportunity, though, to really say what what that field service hmm. opportunity is. I mean, I expected you to say field uh, service. Um, so, so tell us uh, why. So, so I'm going to preface this with that. there's lots of areas. I, I don't think if you look at the look at any of the Gartner charts. Okay, look mm-hmm. at the. Um, look at the the percentage of customers doing something on, on on Gartner, for example. You know what what vendor has the percent? You know the highest percentage of this. You know, first of all, th- th- they do it via dollar amount, right? So, right. Um, not by number of seats. So, by dollar amount. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, you know, the, 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 the four top players and take Salesforce automation, which is a mature workload, right? We've been doing it for mm-hmm. close to 20 years. Exactly. It's mature. If you, mm-hmm. and I haven't looked at the numbers recently, but, but, but if you look at the, if you look at the, um, the, the overall, uh, size of the marketplace and what percentage, mm-hmm. Everybody has, uh, you know, some software companies or, or no software companies may say, hey, we're the, we're the market leader, right? What they yeah. don't show is they have a 10 or 12% total market share. Mm. Um, so if you add up, and again, I haven't done this recently, but I, when I added up before, I've added up, I've added up uh, Siebel or Oracle, Salesforce, mm-hmm. SAP, and Microsoft. Those, mm-hmm. those three parts, you know, those are the big four, right? Mm-hmm. we're still at less than 35% market share. Yeah. So 65% markets using something else or somebody else. Um, and I'll get that for field service, but you know, you look at kind of the number of number of workers out there. Um, you know, 11% of the workforce is in sales. So 11% of the workforce we're in it today is in sales. That's, it, you know, that that's a good chunk of people, nice business field workers people who who do not have a desk job people who go out and right. do trade work on site mm-hmm. without there's 31% of the workers today are field workers wow. 34% of the workers out there today are in project work I meaning they get assigned to a project mm-hmm. have a project mm-hmm. manager and not all not all of its right. IT projects that might be you know might be the folks behind me doing building the new road but field and project service okay. is thirty is sixty five percent of the overall pie of available workers. Mm-hmm. You know, customer service is twenty two percent. Um. So 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 when I look at just the, the yeah, so they're, they're, they're big shares. They're they're, they're they're huge shares. Um. Mm-hmm. You know, when I look at, when I look at field service, I'm I'm looking at <clears throat> I'm looking at uh, field service before we even bought before we bought field one. Um. You know mm-hmm. the the top the top player in the market share in 2015 had a 14 mm-hmm. percent market share. Wow. The, the the other bucket mm-hmm. had a 42 percent market really share. Nice. Wow! So what's that? Well, that's either things people have custom written. It's you right, know, little right. piece of soft- custom systems. Yeah, little yeah. piece of software with with half of a half of a half a percent of of of, yeah. Uh, yeah. of things. So when I, when I think about mm-hmm. how a partner can expand, uh, don't focus. I don't focus on on our on the big three competitors. Uh, I wouldn't at least. Mm-hmm. You know, focus on how do I get more uh, of that. Of either the, either the dying marketplace, I'm looking at I'm looking at the share of competitors 2015, and three of the players are out of business now. They're no longer in the field service business. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Incredible. Uh, so, so how do we go after those? Um, how do we go after mm-hmm. specific verticals? So, so on the suites, I think there's not a place that Microsoft has addressed a, as a as an available marketplace that there's not white space for partners. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. And so partners need to um, uh, need to engage with with, 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 with with Microsoft and figure out where those places are, but also look at, mm-hmm. you know, look at, you know, where you're at. A lot of the partners who've done field service or started doing field service came from an operations background. 
Right. Yeah. Uh, 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 not surprised. Not surprised. And the other thing I would tell partners is is the, the marketplace has changed significantly. You mm-hmm. have to have somebody on your team if you're going to do projects of medium complexity or higher, who understands Azure. Mm-hmm. If if you haven't jumped on the Azure bandwagon, yeah. um, y- y- you need to stop and go back and, mm-hmm. and get mm-hmm. on it. Um, I, I got my first demo of uh, of Cortana skills. Um, lo- yeah, yeah. So it's, it's obviously a new thing because I haven't heard of it before. It, it, it's 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 a new thing. Um, mm-hmm. Blew me away. Absolutely, positively phenomenal. Um, mm-hmm. 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 And you could ask, you you can literally hit the microphone button on your computer or microphone button on your on your phone, and go Cortana. Mm-hmm. Can I get directions to my next field service appointment, please? And Cortana would 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 go out to the nine three sixty five, understand where you're at, pull pull mm-hmm. it in. And it was just it was an absolutely awesome set of, but it was all based on Azure. I mean, the actual Dynamics yeah. portion of that was nothing. Totally agree. I mean, the investment has to be in there. As in more and more, and my experience is that Dynamics doesn't stop within its own application. If you like it, it does. It, most projects always merge into Azure. It seems these days. Well, you know, we just had we're just doing some work with um, one of the analysts, and and they're like, "Well, what's your integration strategy?" I'm like, my personal perspective is, what, do we have to have our own? I mean, if, mm-hmm. if you take Azure Logic Apps, I mean, here's an integrate. I mean, here Azure Logic Apps has all these apps it talks to. Mm. And so, why would the the Dynamics team need to build their own integration strategy when we have these built-in tools in our toolbox we can use today? Yeah. Well, your competitors do. Well, our competitors don't have all of our breath. So, did they get it? Um, I, I uh, will know in a uh, in, in a couple weeks here. <laughs> yeah, yeah what they're right yeah so true so true i it's m- mine is just a is, is just to is just to 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 say what what we want to do and let somebody else actually make sure it actually happens yeah yeah so i want to talk about partners that you've seen that have been very successful um over partners that not so much and you've mentioned before saying hey here's a bunch of accounts that i'm not doing anything in but we know there's something there go out and help you know get involved and uh see what you can draw out of those accounts what other six you know things have you seen successful partners do well that would have been a contributor to their growing success I, I think the, the partners I have, uh, so uh, a couple things here. One is if, if you're a partner and you're interfacing with Microsoft and every email to Microsoft is an ask of Microsoft, mm-hmm. um, n- knock it off. Um, yeah. if, if your every email is, I need something from you, I need something from you, I need something from you, mm-hmm. you, you you're not. Uh, at that point, I'm going to start ignoring your email just because I, I don't have that much time to. to I, I'm not your admin. Yeah, um, yeah. I think the partners in this really well have been the partners that understand the ecosystem, um, understand that we don't always have control of what we want to have control over, and, and understand how we can, how they're, they're going to win some and lose some. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I almost, you know, the the the, the concept thing, I think about it a lot is market sharing. Yep. You, you know, if you look at the if you look at the biggest partners in the in the in the world today from a dynamics perspective, there are mm-hmm. partner they are partners who generally tend to share. Yeah. Um, true. True. Uh, and then you look at you look at those who I mean, I look at partners who struggle. I mean, I look at big consulting firms that have struggled to start and run a dynamics practice and almost mm-hmm. universally what it comes down to is that they, they, I mean, they don't have a sharing culture internally. It's yep. a very, you know, yep. this is our stuff. These are our toys. Um, you, know, you know, go away. Now, you know, some people at Microsoft, some, I've seen people at Microsoft have that same attitude. They don't generally tend to last very long. Mm-hmm. That's the nice thing is, is mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. if, if, if you're, if you have the attitude of these are my toys, go away. You, you're generally going to end up getting, uh, you're not going to last more than a year or two here, maybe three or four, but you're not yeah. going to last, you're not going to last 10 years if, if you have a, what's in it for me um, attitude from a Microsoft perspective. 
but from a partner perspective, it's it's sharing. It's here's case studies. So, you know, the same partners who I call and say, hey, uh, you know, I don't have anything for you. Mm-hmm. I'll pick the phone and call them. Hey, I need a reference customer. I don't care what the size is that has the following. You know, they need to have Dynamics NAV and CRM integrated. They need to have uh SAP and, and I, here, I, you may have a partner like, mm-hmm. you have a customer like this. Um, and the partners who raise their hand and say, Yeah, I got one. Here they are. You know, let, let, let me do an intro email for you. Yeah. Uh, first of all, that makes my job infinitely easier. And I'm going to remember that you made my job easier and not harder. And I'm going to want to help you again. Yeah. Um, yeah. Makes sense. But, but it's also just the ability to share and, and not. If you hold all your cards so close to the chest, um, mm-hmm. Microsoft and us as our partners, we're married. It's not always a happy marriage. It's not always the best marriage, but mm-hmm. we're married. My success hinges on you yeah. and your success hinges on me. Exactly. Um, yep. Yep. So we got to figure out a way to make this work. And the best marriages I've seen are, are ones where, where we, we, you know, we laugh together and we cry together. If one of us laughing, one's crying. Mm-hmm. You know, it's probably not the best marriage um, or, yeah, or exactly. you're not married to a redhead like I am and, she, and, and you won't get stabbed in your sleep. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, what advice, um, and I'm getting to the end here, what advice do you have for partners running 365 businesses um, or considering it? So probably more on the considering. So they're, they're, let's say they're strong in another area. It might be in uh, Office 365. It might be even in Azure and they're considering – uh, getting involved in dynamics. I think the biggest mistake I see from partners who have uh, Azure or um, Office 365 is is Dynamics 365 is a, is a, the business application space as a whole is a very different marketplace than the than the um, than the uh, the more infrastructure or 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 other other collaboration platforms. Um, yeah. and what I've seen is partners don't take the long game of it. You need, you, mm-hmm. you, you're, you're, you need to take a long game approach. If you're taking a short game approach, find another partner to partner with. Um, yeah. um, because it's a remarkably different marketplace. It's a remarkably different thing. And, and the other thing is I would say, find your vertical, find your niche, because if you don't, I mean like selling office 365, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Everybody does email almost the same every time. Right. If you don't find your niche in there, you're, you're not going to be successful. So, so, so find a niche mm-hmm. and, and play the long game. And, and by playing the long game, I mean, you know, realize this is a two to three year investment period for you. You're going to invest a yeah. million dollars building a practice. Yeah. 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 If you're not willing to invest a million dollars building your practice. So, two or three people for two or three years. Yeah. If you're not willing to invest that million mm-hmm. dollars, go find somebody who's already invested that million dollars. I mean, if you look at the number of yep. uh, small, medium partners in, our, in like here in Atlanta where I live, you know, there's, there's, mm-hmm. there's two dozen of them. <laughs> go, 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 go partner up with them. Um, yeah. Yeah. Get a referral. So, in other words, so you're saying, don't do it yourself. Um, you could actually partner with another partner that might already have the expertise in that space. If you're not willing to make the investment and see the investment through, yeah, excellent. Uh, be, because the million, I, I'm using the million dollar mark. A million dollars is a lot of money. Mm. It, mm-hmm. It's it's a ton. Of, I mean, a million dollars, million pounds, million euros. It, it, a million of anything is a lot. But yep. that's yep. if you're starting your practice from scratch. And, and you're not doing it yourself and you've got to kind of do your own thing and you've got to bring people in. That's what you're going to spend building your practice. To the point mm-hmm. it gets profitable. If you're not willing to make that yeah. investment, go yeah. find another partner that you can partner with and work with them. I mean, the, the only thing worse than spending a million dollars to me, a million dollars, you, you can, you have a practice you can, you can turn on. I think worse would mm-hmm. be spending a half million dollars and, and, and killing the practice. Because then you've lost yeah. half a million dollars with no no ability to ever get it back. At least if you spend the full million dollars, you're you're yeah. you know you, <clears throat> you're you're on the on the on the return to profitability at some point. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Okay, so what are your predictions for the next five years in the dynamic space? And this can be it's only predictions. No one's holding you to it. 
you know, the, the, the term I see being kicked. So first of all, my hope is that I make space that um, we become more transparent. Mm-hmm. Um, meaning that every time I look at a big demo from Microsoft stage of, of anything that somebody's showing, um, they kind of hand build a, almost a Sierra map. If I see one more SharePoint yep. demo of, of a hand built Sierra map, I, I might, I might, I might go ballistic, <laughs> uh, but p- be transparent from the perspective of we, we become a fabric or underpinning the business application layer inside Microsoft. And we're already there, but, mm-hmm. but, but we're not transparent yet. Meaning, meaning that the UI becomes decomposable and recomposable. Um, th- th- that's one of the predictions I would love to come see. I think uh, the, the, the bot revolution, um, mm-hmm. is way less than five years. The bot revolution is upon us. You know, we, we will have robot overlords, mm-hmm. um, in the very near future. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and I think, you know, things like Cortana skills and voice, I mean, I, I hate talking to Siri or Google now or Cortana. I, I hate going, Hey, send me, send a text to my wife. That, 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 that drives me nuts. Um, yeah. my wife on the other hand loves talking to her phone. Um, mm-hmm. my kids, um, it's actually kind of cool. You know, we have, we have an Alexa, um, in, in our kitchen mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and my kids, Hey, what's the square root of 12? And Alexa answers it. How do you spell boat in Alexa? An- I mean, my, my kids are almost, you know, they're, they're, they're 10 and 14, but, but they view talking to this little cylinder, my, my kitchen as natural. Yeah. Yeah, I still yeah. view it as a weird thing. They view it as a very so. I think that's going to kind of evolve <laughs> over the next five years. Is 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 making bots do do things on our behalf? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely interesting times. Okay, so I've got a couple of quick fire questions for you. Uh, what book do you recommend most to people working in Dynamics, and why? So, so there's a couple of books I'd recommend. Uh, the, the, my favorite book is uh, The Fight from Syndrome by Bob Hembold. Mm-hmm. Um, Bob mm-hmm. was our first COO back in the early 90s. Right. If you want to understand why Microsoft people change jobs every two years, if you want to understand mm-hmm. why we're set up the way we're set up, and, and some of this has changed in the past mm-hmm. couple of years and with the, the last, you know, uh, reorganization has changed a little more, but if you want to see why we were set yep. up the way we're set up and, and why we do things the way we do things and kind of the deep seated cultural things at Microsoft, um, Bob Hembold's mm-hmm. book mm-hmm. should be on, should be on everybody who deals with Microsoft's reading list. And the other one? Um, there's, there's lots of other ones I, I recommend. Um, you know, the question behind the question is really good. Um, crucial conversations is probably the other one. I think crucial conversations mm-hmm. is one of the best classes I've ever been to. If you get a chance to go to the class, mm-hmm. not just the book, the class, okay. it, it is, um, I tend to have a bull in a China shop approach to, to, to life in general. I pretty much slap things on the table mm-hmm. and we can discuss them and we will we'll work our way through them. Um, Mm -hmm. I I learned that my communication style is not necessarily normal, which is, (laughs) which is, (laughs) which is fun. But, but, but that, that, Mm -hmm. that book really helped me kind of figure out why, um, you know, why conversations go the way they do and how you can help steer conversation, how you can have emotionally charged conversations without people getting upset and, and annoyed and, 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 uh, and, 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 and walking off. So for me, that was, a, that was a great yeah. book. Um, and then, you know, the question by the question, I've always found that, you know, people ask questions, but the questions mm-hmm. they ask are never the questions they actually mean to ask. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, um, I always want to, you know, so I always want to, what's the question that, that what's the question actually feeding the question you're asking? Cause sometimes people ask questions a way to hide their true intent. So I, I like keep asking those questions, yeah. kind of peel down, the, peel down the onion to get down the basics of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I, I read a book some years ago called let's get real or let's not play by Mahan Kolsa. And it sounds very similar to what you were saying there. Um, uh, you know, to getting to the truth or, or the, the questions that should be asked and um, and not beating around the bush, so to speak. Yeah, very, very much mm. so. So what's your, what's, your, what's your favorite app and why? 
Oh, my favorite app. Um, that's a that that is probably the hardest question on the planet to 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 answer. Um, I, so I actually, <laughs> what are you using? Uh, well, so that's actually funny. So you mentioned that I actually went to my battery meter uh, this morning before our conversation mm-hmm. and pulled up what apps I what I mm-hmm. I've been, been consuming the most amount of battery life. Oh, yeah. I figured that good. was a good way of telling good, you. Good. Um, yeah. My current favorite one, um, and, and this is a shameless Microsoft plug, is Microsoft Picks. Yep. Um, they the, the version I have has the ability to to scan business cards and documents and whiteboards yep. into it. Uh, yep, um, yep, yep, yep. And, and just the ability to do that and and do do it on the fly is probably. Um, probably one of my, my favorite things ever um you know L- linkedin i'll tell you i'm on linkedin um, mm-hmm. um all, all, all the time so linkedin is definitely definitely a favorite app um you know kind of my guilty pleasure yeah. app is a, is an app called blind which is mm-hmm. kind of a uh, an anonymous work chat application it's interesting to see mm-hmm. um kind of uh kind of the uh the water cooler of Microsoft because I, I I work remotely so it's not always I'm not always in the office all the time so it's kind of interesting just yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of see, see, seeing the cesspool that is the, the the water cooler and kind of getting a chuckle and moving on. Uh, daily rituals? Do you have any uh, that kind of set you up for a successful um, day? I, you know, I've got two. You know, one is I uh, I like to start work early. Um, I think that the earlier you start work. Mm-hmm. Um, and not 4 a.m. early, but 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 I like starting and work early to, to get a head start on what, what else is going on. I like to you know kind of sit down at the beginning of the day and 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 be able to have a clean slate. So I, I would say that, right. that that that's good. The other thing is you know working from home. Um, I've been doing it now mm-hmm. for for a long time, and, and and what what I do is is I have a office in my backyard um, at 6 p.m. at night. Not always, but I'm going to say, you know, four out of five nights a week, I aim for five. At 6 p.m., I close my laptop lid. I open my open my, 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 uh, my shed door. I walk up my shed and close it mm-hmm. and leave my laptop in my office. Um, nice. Too many people I see with that work from home. They never disconnect mm-hmm. from their office, and and I, I might be back. I might come down back down to my office and grab my laptop at ten o'clock at night and do an hour with between ten and eleven. Yep. But I I try mm-hmm. to at six p.m. My work day's over, um, and I I take phone calls and other stuff. But but my laptop, my tether, if you will, I try to disconnect that at six. If you could redo anything in your dynamics career, what would it be? Oh, the, uh, that list is long. Um, I, I, I would say uh, for, 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 for me personally, what I would redo is, is I'm not always known for having, uh, a strong sense of tact, which has been both good and bad. Um, mm-hmm. in, in the past two years of my current job, I've had to learn a strong sense of tact, which has been uh, a challenging mm-hmm. learning experience for me. I, I wish I'd done that 10 years ago. Um, right. Right. and so sometimes I think that just because you're right, doesn't mean, doesn't mean you're right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so I would say, yeah. especially if you come from a technical background, I come, I come from a tech geek background, Mark. Um, if you want to have a successful mm-hmm. career, um, uh, just cause you're right. I mean, you're right. And second thing is find mentors, find people who care about you. They don't, and, and find them outside, especially here at like a Microsoft, you find them outside your organization, find them in, yep. find them in pockets of, yeah. The coming outside you and, and, and help have people who are willing to invest in, in your future, um, who aren't, mm-hmm. who, who isn't your manager, who, who isn't in your command chain. Um, and it's interesting. You also provide a lot of input for them. So, so it's a two way street there make, and make sure it's a two way street, but that, that's what I would say would be the two things I would, I would do. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Ben, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. Before you go, if people want to follow you online, where can they find you? Uh, you know, right, LinkedIn is probably the, 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 the best way to, to find me. Um, so it's linkedin.com forward slash n forward slash Ben Vollmer. Um, it's probably the best mm-hmm. way. I did have a blog for a good period of time and that will be resurrected. But for right now, LinkedIn's the best place to go. 
This has been a Dynamics 365 podcast focusing on the ingredients of a successful Dynamics 365 practice. Your host was Business Solution MVP Mark Smith, otherwise known as NZ365Guy. For more information on this interview, show notes, feedback, and resources mentioned, or if you know someone who would be a great guest for future episodes, please go to nz365guy.com forward slash podcast. Thanks to Maplytics for sponsoring the Dynamics 365 Practice Podcast.